fanatics on the banks of Volca, cannibals in the mountain bunker, slavers on the shores of the dried out sea. How many monsters has the war given rise to? Or perhaps were they always there? And the war simply gave them a chance to show themselves and now we're stuck with them forever. Regardless, we can't afford to lose hope. We are getting ever closer to our dream. Finding a place where we could live, free from radiation and mutants. The maps we recovered in the desert have provided us with several promising options. And now the crew members are excitedly waiting for the Colonel's decision on where the Aurora should go next. Currently, though, the train is calmly rolling eastward. The crew rests, and Stepan proposed to Katya. It was a proposal she couldn't refuse. We've left those sands long ago, and it still persists. <clears throat> what does Crest even smoke? <laughs> it's terrible. In any case, I'm better now. I hate to interrupt, guys, but uh, you should come to the mess hall. The table is almost served. Thanks, Stepan. We'll be there in a moment. Shall we go, Artyom? Or shall we stay a little longer? It's so nice. You know, Artyom, I've been looking at Stepan and Katya, you and me, and thinking how lucky we are. It was so different with my parents. It was bad. Did I ever tell you why my mom died? Of course I didn't. It was because of dad. He used to be even harsher back then. He used to come home from the barracks and reach for the bottle while taking off his boots. They'd quarrel and then he'd stop appearing for a time. And while he was away, she'd start drinking too and crying when she was sober. She'd feel better, would get kind of dreamy when drunk. You know how she used to call me, just A. She'd hug me and say, one day, A, you and I are going to go to Vladivostok, the city I was born in, and from there to a village on the ocean shore. I was five back then and didn't really get much, but I could imagine that village and the ocean so vividly because I believed her. And then she killed herself, drank some kind of poison. Father quit drinking after mom's death. Didn't ever pay much attention to me, but with her gone, he'd never leave me alone, took me along everywhere. We only talked about her a couple of times though. I used to have this doll, Jana. I played make-believe that she was my daughter and we went to the ocean together. Then, my father hid it, told me it got lost. He probably didn't want me to agonize over mom's dream. Then I imagine she grew up and went to Vladivostok. And now I'm going, not to Vladivostok, but with you. The dream came true. By the way, I was always intrigued by what Dad dreams about. He should have some dreams, but what are they? Higher rank? He could choose any. Saving people? What would the saved do next? Sit underground? I never understood him. What does he hope for in life? What makes him happy? Nothing, perhaps. He never really had any time to think about tomorrow. Down in the metro, those thoughts don't come casually. Here on the surface, though. 
I, for one, have something I want to do. I want to run through the sand barefoot. Build a sand castle for the kids. I'm imagining two. A boy and a girl. The boy would be a copy of you. We'd go swimming with mountains behind us. Wooden houses on the shore. The sun would wake us up every day, rising from the ocean. That harbor is our destination. Worth going there even if we have half the world to cross. Everyone should have a destination. A point on the map where they aspire to go, and where one could finally be happy. All our guys have their own. We broke out of the metro and are now starting to scatter. Not at once, of course. At first, we're all still running together, searching. But eventually, each of us will find a point like this and stay there. I don't know where my dad's destination is. Don't know where yours is either. But I know I love you a whole lot. Go, Artyom. I'll rest some more and join you later. What do you know? Everything is perfect, Artyom. Follow us. A moment of your attention, please. Half a year on the road, and 4,000 clicks behind us. 
We have been through a lot. All right, people. I do understand I can't keep it a secret much longer. After a careful study of the satellite maps we've obtained, <coughs> and much deliberation, we found a place we could call our new home. <coughs> it is a river valley. There's forest and a hydroelectric power plant. Yeah. This place is quite far from densely populated areas, which, as our journey has proven, is important. We're about two days away from it now. So, congratulations, yeah. 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 yeah! Yet, this is not our last order of business for today. Stepan, Katya. Oh, Prince! Stepan, Katya, repeat after me. I take you to be my spouse. I take you to be my spouse. And vow to hold you from this day forward. And vow to for hold you from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, <coughs> for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness, in sickness and, and in health. health. To love and to cherish to and until to cherish death and do us part. To us part. As the captain of this ship, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Live long and be happy. Oh, and... Gorka! 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 were falling apart. The gas I breathed in that ammo dump. Said How I don't can you have believe long. that monster? We've just been through a desert and all that sand. So that might be the reason. Katya, Artem, a few words. I'm all right, Artyom. Go. I'm fine now. I don't know Take about this. Take a seat. The don't be speaking the mud. Oh, Artyom's getting chewed out today. It's not Artyom's fault. I fell into that stupid bunker all by myself. And if Dad says one word to him about it, I'll tear him a new one. Yes, this is getting old. As soon as something happens, it's always Artyom's fault, even when he had nothing to do with it. That's just his fate. Fate? Get out of here! Yes. In any case, Katya will calm the Colonel down. You shouldn't worry either, Anna. She'll fix you in no time at all. She's good. No doubt about that. We drew the lucky ticket with her, especially you, Stepan. That's a fact. Thank you, Anna. Artyom, you shouldn't keep your commander waiting. Run right along. We'll wait here. So, son, care to tell me what Arno, do we do please. now? Let us not panic and think constructively. So, Katya, what do you think? I think that trusting some degenerate's diagnosis wouldn't be wise. 
A move from humid matter into the desert with its dry heat and sandstorms is a stress for us. Yes, I do think she'd be hit really bad right off the start had it my been My thoughts gas. exactly. Thus, first I'll check her condition to the best of my knowledge. Also, we're approaching the valley with its forest air. That alone could heal her. I'm sorry to intervene, but did something happen? Oh, Anna coughed out some blood. My god. Do you really think it's the same? That sounds more like TB to me. That's for sure. TB we can handle. We've got enough antibiotics, and air does help with that. What if... What if that degenerate was right, Katya? What do we do? Is there a medicine? There was an air defense battery station in our village. Right on the brink of war, they received a new drug. It saved a lot of people after gas exposure and general poisoning. I'll check my mom's records and find its name. I think it was produced in Novosibirsk. Right, Novosibirsk. You're back. Your opinion. For Anna's sake, I'd go to the edges of the earth. As for Novosibirsk, it's about 2,000 clicks. Then it's decided. We head for the valley. If it is suitable, we settle there. If our state worsens, I'll take a group of volunteers to find that drug. So Katya, please, find that name for I'll us. I'll find it. Don't worry. One more thing, Artem. I want no surprises in that valley. You are our most seasoned scout. So take the rail car, one volunteer, and go check everything out before we arrive. Let's go back for now. Tell Anna and the people to calm down. Now I understand why she was so down there. Just imagine thinking about what happened so long. Is there anything more than the told us about, so we can go and find it for you, if it is needed. Mm, that sounds like a great plan. I'd also like to say this. Guys, please don't worry. I've been feeling pretty bad as it is for ruining the party. Oh, come on, you didn't ruin anything. I just brought myself down to rock bottom over that bastard from Yamantau. Though it must just be the sand and desert climate. Of course that must be it. We were discussing exactly that just now. All right, a toast to you guys. Just be happy together. Great to toast to you! To you. Ah! Stefan, will you follow us? Just like water. Easy as pie. Пора вернуть эту землю себе. 
А кругом горят факелы, это сбор всех погибших частей. И люди, стрелявшие в наших отцов, строят планы на наших детей. Нас рожали под звуки марши, нас пугали тюрьмой. Но хватит ползать на брюхе, мы уже возвратились домой. Этот поезд в огне, и нам не на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и нам некуда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. Этот поезд в огне, и нам не на что больше жать. Этот поезд в огне, и нам некуда больше бежать. Эта земля была нашей, пока мы не увязли в борьбе. Она умрет, если будет ничьей, пора вернуть эту землю себе. This is definitely about us. There's even a colonel in it. Yes, it is time we took this land back. And one more thing. We don't want surprises like the ones we had on the Volga or in Yamantau. So we're sending a scouting party ahead on a rail car. Artyom needs a volunteer to support him. Me! Pick me! I'll check the hell out of that valley, please! <laughs> Something makes me think that Alyosha is mainly going to check if there are any Amazons or women in general there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all set. Frankly, I envy you, Stepan. You got a full family, a wife and child at once. And you don't have to worry about diapers or belly aches. Envy is a bad thing. <laughs> we're not the ones to avoid diapers, Colonel. In fact, we're planning to present Nastya with a little brother, if she doesn't object. I'd rather get a sister. We could play with dolls together. I could care for her. You could play Sparta in special operations with the brother. Ah, cut it out, Stepan. God knows we've had enough of operations. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'd like to retire. Time to have some life! You can't retire yet. You're too young! <laughs> I am old, Nastya. You're not! Hmm. You said envy was a bad thing, Nastya. Hmm? But what am I to do? Your mom has you, but my Anna doesn't have a smart curl like you. Dad! Don't dad me! A 20-year-old won't even think about children. But I would sure like to see grandchildren at my age. Yeah, you'd teach them CQC. Dual-wielding pistols. <laughs> <laughs> I could come visit you. Of course, you're welcome, Nastya. The thing is, Grandpa Miller won't give up until he has grandchildren of his own. Hear that, Artyom? I don't even know what else to say. She's beautiful, sporting. Yeah, I'm Olympic level with a rifle. I get not having kids in Metro. Darkness, TB, rats, mutations. But what about here? <laughs> All right, Dad. We'll get to work on solving your problem tonight. At that note, how about a drink? To repopulation of Earth. Two kids! Yes! Two children! Two children! Two children. <sighs> One more toast! To the new colony! May it grow and prosper! To the new to colony! The new colony. <laughs> Oh, perfect. And to having more women join it. <laughs> <laughs> Alyosha, I never doubted you. Yes, Alyosha. I don't think you should be worried about that. If we are successful, there will be people joining us. Honest, good people. I'm sure they survive too. 
Well, if any bad people decide to show up, they'll be sorry they did. <laughs> oh, definitely. When we're done with the bad apples here, we might think of something to do about Moscow. That's true. To love! To love! So smooth. Oh. Nectar of the gods. It's your turn, Aunt Young. Come on, impress us. This heat is just unbearable, I must say. Hello, my friend! As you can see, we're busy with giving the weapons some proper care after the desert. Yeah, I hate sand, I must say. It's rough and coarse and gets everywhere. Irritates me to no end. So, as soon as we got out of that hellhole, I started cleaning and overhaul. And Duke, being the kind of guy that he is, volunteered to help. Yeah. Volunteered my ass. You're a slave driver, like that Baron. <laughs> well, you should have taken that shambler for a dive in the sand. It's not a kalash. I didn't even shoot it afterwards. Thank God. I don't know if it even will shoot, though. So you, young man, got lucky there. Yes, it is a mystery, really, how those bandits manage to keep their guns working in that desert. Though their gunsmiths are good. That gun you brought back is definitely custom made. A fine job. And it's been well maintained, too. This just warms my heart. I didn't do too poorly either, even if I do say so myself. I've been led to believe that the Tihar with the new ammo worked wonders in your hands. Oh, that it did. Artyom made a fine barbecue there. Yes, in any case, you don't need to worry about the weapons, Artyom. I'll have them in mint condition by the time we make our next stop. <laughs> God damn it, it's still dirty. All right, another rub. What the hell? It still doesn't go away. Just a little bit more. Anna sure gave us all this care. Oh, but don't you worry. It does look like tuberculosis, but Katya is a real magic. She... No, she'll put her back on her feet in no time at all. But besides, there's finally something nice ahead. A river, a forest, even a hydroelectric dam. <laughs> that sounds interesting, but I haven't fixed one yet. So don't worry, Antiovich. Everything will be fine. Soon we'll have a chance at normal lives at that valley, you know? Are you and Anna gonna have kids? Artyom, it's about time, Batuha! Moscow doesn't sound right for those with radiation and all, but the valley... Oh, that's the place. And Stepan and Katya would follow suit, too, since they're married. We do have to populate the colony, you know. We'll build a good one, too, with some skilled people and, most importantly, smart people. And we'll surely attract more. 
And if some assholes decide to crash the party, ho, 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 we'll send them packing in no time with our guys. Of course, that valley needs checking out first. The colonel is absolutely right. But you and Alyosha, you can handle that, no problem. Boy, that cursed mountain? Oh, I had this nasty feeling back then. I even told the colonel why. He was so eager to see that minister of his, he didn't care. Not quite like him, huh? Well, that's to be expected. You know, everyone has a string which, when pulled, makes you forget about everything else. This he got shot like a dog and saves him right. Remember how we rushed to fight the Baron? That one was a real bastard, of course. Taking people like that over nothing, yeah, just as bad as the Astrakhan gang. Tisty got shot like a dog and serves him right. Would be nice to wipe out all of his lieutenants. Uh, you know what, I'm sure Gyo will handle them just fine. Uh, she's not a girl who'd leave a job half done, huh? <laughs> So what I'm saying is, we weren't roasting in that oven for nothing, huh? We also helped people, besides getting those maps. Ah, well, I think I'll finish with your trophy here. Go prepare the rail car for your recon trip with Alyosha. Speaking of him, I think he wanted to go with you so badly because he also had a feeling, you know, in his usual direction. <laughs> Look after the Tletcher before he finds his, uh, you know, head stuck somewhere nasty, will you? Still, I have to give it to you, Bratuka. Bringing this beauty here was a stroke of genius. I feel she's going to help us a lot. Mind you, I'm not trading my rail card for anything in the world, but this baby here is just amazing. Never mind the looks, her engine has been finely tuned and maintained. She's got a strengthened frame and springs, even her brakes are in perfect form. The mechanic skill and passion are as plain as day here, and I love that. I mean, this thing reminds me of my old bay. The one I once drove out of Kaduri. A ton and a half truck from that war had been rusting in a scrapyard for 40 years at least. Ran on firewood like the Euro. Of course it was more memory than a truck. The cabin was all rotten, plywood don't keep that way. Platform was missing altogether, but the engine with the gearbox and the gas generator was still there. The frame was okay. Yeah, that was a piece of work. A month without taking a break. But in the end it ran. Then, I put the body of the same minibus you have here on the top of the frame. And driving that Franken bus, I went as far as Astrakhan. Mind you, that thing didn't have more than 30 HP on its birthday. Terrible hassle, too. You not just have to chop firewood, you have to make the sticks even and nice, or else it doesn't run well. It takes a lot of experience, like heating up a proper sauna, you know? So, I'd spend half a day getting ready, a couple of hours driving. Yeah. Fell in love with that thing. Oi, mamachka. No wonder after all that effort. Still, had to give it to one bastard in Astra, right? Otherwise, I would have just been killed right there, and that's if I got lucky. Huh? So that's how it went back then. As for this beauty, I'll take good care of her. For all time's sake, she'll be winning every car show we run across, huh? Ain't she beauty? Oof, two croissants to my eye, like a bride on her wedding day. Perfect! So, there you have it, Bratucha. There you have it.